Modern electric cars are now faster than old supercars, but it wasn't that long ago that electric motors were reserved for milk floats and tiny city cars. So how have EVs gone from a laughing stock to breaking quarter mile records in what feels like no time at all? Honestly, we've gone from the G-Wiz to the Taycan Turbo in what feels like just a few seconds. You've heard all the bonkers acceleration figures from cars like the Tesla Model S Plaid and the Taycan Turbo S. They may have ridiculous 0-60 to times in the sub three second range, but how do more everyday EVs stack up. The GWs we mentioned earlier couldn't even do 0 to 60 because it ran out of puff at 45 miles an hour. But electric cars have come a very long way since then. The Model 3 is meant to be Tesla's answer to the 3 Series, and the performance version does 0 to 60 in a frankly ridiculous 3.4 seconds. If you want a 3 Series that gets anywhere close to that, you'll need to stretch your budget to an M3. Hyundai's Ionic 5 may sound like a pop rock band, but it's quicker to 60 than an old Ferrari Testarossa. Have that Miami Vice. This one is oddly specific, but it just shows how good electric cars at real world performance. The BMW i3 will go from 50 to 74 miles an hour, just 0.6 seconds slower than an M4. So if you've got an M4, watch out for those i3s on the motorway. And this has to be the most surprising one. The most powerful Nissan Leaf, that's the N connector model if you didn't know, has 213 brake horsepower and does 0 to 60 in 6.7 seconds. When on earth did that happen? That's faster than an old Ferrari 308 and similar to most decent front wheel drive hot hatches. Admittedly, the top speed is still only 98 miles an hour, but still, it's a leaf. We could go on forever looking at the impressive 0 to 60 times of modern electric cars, but we won't because it does get a bit boring. So, what makes them so quick off the mark? To put it simply, instant torque. A lot of electric cars will launch their occupants silently into the distance before a combustion engine has woken up and had its first coffee. Combustion engines have more working parts compared to an electric motor. You've got pistons, valves, camshafts, turbos and all of the sorts of moving parts that need some time to get up to speed before you can get that power through the gearbox and eventually to the wheels. Electric motors are far more efficient and have considerably less moving parts. This plus a more simplified transmission means electric cars can apply instant torque right off the get-go, whereas a combustion engine won't get maximum torque and power for at least a few thousand RPM. But what EVs gain in acceleration, they often lack in overall speed. The launch might be quick enough to give it a good head start, but it's likely that a combustion engine car with similar power and weight will eventually catch up and pull away. For example, the Tesla Model S performance is rated at 771 brake horsepower. So you'd easily be fooled into thinking the top speed would be something close to 200 miles an hour. Instead, it's a figure most modern hatchbacks would beat at a measly 162 miles an hour. So that Leaf might beat my Passat off the line, but I'll come flying past it when it tops out at 98 miles an hour. But why exactly is that? The simple answer is that they're just not geared for it. The very thing that gives electric cars the advantage off the lights is also their limiting factor when it comes to top speed, the transmission. They're far simpler than a regular car's gearbox, but they usually have just one fixed ratio. The electric motor takes the flaws of the combustion engine and flips it around with instant low-end power that fizzles out at higher RPM. So without more ratios to bring the rotating speed down, they just can't keep applying the same power through the higher revs. To be fair to electric cars, it's just not what they're designed for right now. Most electric cars will run out of juice somewhere between 250 and 350 miles. So they're not meant to be continent smashing high speed cruisers just yet. Instead, they're meant for short city journeys and YouTube drag races, like the one that we did with a Formula One car. This is definitely set to change in the future with many manufacturers looking at better gearboxes to increase both range and top speed. It's complex and expensive, which is why companies like Rimac and Porsche are leading the way. The Porsche Taycan has a two-speed transmission for the rear wheels and a single speed at the front. It'll stay in first gear up to 62 miles an hour, and then when it shifts into second, the rear motor can work at a lower speed to improve the range at cruising speed. So electric cars might be the kings of the quarter mile. But what happens when you put them on a track? Volkswagen showed the world what electric power can do with the ridiculously quick IDR. 
it broke the Goodwood Festival of Speed hill climb record by 1.6 seconds. That's even more impressive when you see that the previous record was held for 20 years by a McLaren Mercedes Formula 1 car. Granted, it's an unrestricted, non-road legal car that can't take part in any race series, but it's an impressive showcase of what can be done with electric motors. The fastest production EV around the Nürburgring is the 1000 brake horsepower Tesla Model S Plaid with a time of 7 minutes and 30 seconds. That's pretty quick, but not as quick as some petrol powered saloons. The Mercedes GT63 S, Jaguar Project 8 and the Porsche Panamera Turbo have all lapped quicker with considerably less power. There actually hasn't been any official footage of the Plaid's run, but Elon Musk has said that they want to return with track tires, carbon brakes and better aero to try and beat the record again. And what about the Rimac Nevera? That's a proper purpose-built electric hypercar. So surely it has to be quicker on track than a saloon car. Well, there are no lap times just yet. It might do the quarter mile in an astonishing eight and a half seconds, but we're yet to see it go on an actual racetrack. It'll have to go a long way to beat cars like the Mercedes AMG GT Black Series and the Porsche 911 GT2 RS. We all know that we almost got a good comparison with a Rimac Concept 2 on the Grand Tour, but Richard Hammond sent it off a cliff. Combustion engines have slowly improved with years and years of development, but it feels like electric cars have come a long way in a much shorter time, which of course makes sense. Volkswagen's first production electric car was the Mark III Golf City Strummer. It came out in 1992 with 27 brake horsepower, a top speed of 62 miles an hour and sold just 120 cars in its four year run. Volkswagen is now selling more of its electric ID3 than that in a single day and it's definitely much quicker. So yes, many electric cars can accelerate faster than old supercars and even some new ones, but there's still some way to go yet before we see this take on a track or top speed record. Hot hatches have also been setting times at the Nürburgring that are way faster than old supercars. Click the video here to find out how they're doing it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.